only 30 times. Hi. Good afternoon. How come? Hi Pam. Hi Hakan. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Hello. Claire. Okay. We Good. have now 17. Um, so we will be waiting for around uh, more people in uh, 10 minutes. We are live at the moment, by the way, and uh, open to attendees. Um, so we can have a quick test. Um, does anybody want to ma uh, make any um, screen sharing or presentation? Then I'm not sure if I'm going to do qualified, but does it count though? Like um, hi, Hakan. Thank uh, you. I, no, I think we'll just talk, actually. I don't think we'll share uh, screen share. I think we'll just talk through some points. Um, so I'm just, I is that right? I can't start my video. Um, I don't have permission to do that. Um, you can do i think when it started uh let me try to sort it out sorry the host has to allow us to start the video let, let me okay okay we will sort it out dear host if you hear me <laughs> And just let us open our videos. Okay. <laughs> it's coming down. So sorry, Hakan. Oh, okay. uh, so so I'm, I'm coming. Uh, you. Uh, which one uh, can't open the? Uh, um, hi, 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 Berlant. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can't start my video. I think I can do that. Uh, yeah. Um, let me try. Uh, is there any, any uh, problem uh, connection? Um, you know, the application connection with your computer, maybe. That is. Uh, uh, okay. You, you are allowed uh, to share your. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. I get a message. You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Really. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, just. Mm. Joe, is there anything okay from your side? Okay. Uh, can, uh, can you yeah, I'm just trying to turn my one and see if it works. Um, no, I need to be um, allowed by the host. Oh, Pam, what about you? Let me check again. I don't know what did I do. Um, Uh, let me make a few co-hosts, maybe it will. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, that's working. Yeah, okay. Out. Yeah, can I try again? Yeah, I think this works. That works for me too. Thanks, Bilent. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and my hair also. Um, of course. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how can can we start? Because it's time. Uh, yeah, time is up now. Yeah, we can... Just uh, I start the recording. Okay, we can. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to wait a little bit until? Uh, everyone has joined because some people they will join late or might have yeah, difficulty maybe. in joining. It's up to you. Yeah, we we will make a kind of slow introduction. Yes. To the main subject, so uh, they can catch up the main subject, the yeah. late attendees, and the the introduction will be for the early birds. On <laughs> Some information about the school, maybe general uh, So yes, um, this because we are recording this webinar. Whoever missed this one and can um, watch again on YouTube as well. Um, my name is Hakan. Let me introduce myself to everybody. So this webinar is organized by. College of Medicine and Dentistry and Nicebridge Academy. College of Medicine and Dentistry is a uh, Birmingham based college focusing on um, medical and doctors and dentists for um, graduate uh, masters and PhD and uh, research. Um, and uh, Nicebridge Academy is based in London, is a learning provider for dentists and uh, medical doctors. This webinar is uh, for the international dentists, for the dentists uh, living and working uh, out of the UK and uh, who want to come to the UK and live in the UK as a dentist and who want to do their own um, job in the, in the UK. So uh, we will have a, um, the aim of the webinar is uh, to give a guidance for the dentists, so about uh, College of Medicine and Dentistry, how to be a dentist in the UK and the route and this scholarship, which is very exciting. You will hear more details. Um, so there is very tight uh, schedule here. So um, that's why we will be very quick and then we will just briefly give information to you at the end of this um, session. We will have question and answer session as well. So you will be able to ask your questions. You can write your questions to the Q&A and, and the bottom of the Zoom, or you can write to chat, or uh, you can write during the webinar as well, but we will answer at the end of the session in a Q&A session. And also you can um, raise your hand and uh, at the end of the session, you can ask if you raise your hand, it means we will open your microphone and video and you will be live with us with your question. Um, so um, today we will, uh, Professor Mayer is with us. He will talk about the, the College of Medicine and Dentistry. Um, Marwe is, joining will be joining to us and she will talk about the uh, AGDP program, uh, the master's program focusing on to the international uh, dentists. And um, Claire will speak about the scholarship process and benefits. And again, Professor Mahi will speak about the route to be a dentist. So how you can be a dentist in the UK if you are a dentist out of the UK. And then Q&A session will be uh, managed by Joe and Annette, Joe and uh, Pam. 
So they are the uh, our recruitment angels of the college. And uh, then, yeah, we will have one uh, hour. Then afterwards, we will have the Q&A session. Um, I think we can start uh, to the main points. I may turn off my camera sometimes. So uh, I do apologize for this from everybody. So yes, feel free to ask your questions into the Q&A uh, bottom or raise your hand. Uh, so let the journey begin and good afternoon, good evening, good night to everybody. I'm saying all of them because you are everywhere uh, in the world, the so time change. Um, so let's start with uh, Professor Mahir al Masri, the uh, Dean um, of College of Medicine and Dentistry to uh, give us information about the school, who we are, what we do. Thank you very much, Hakan. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank my team as well, including people who are who are in the in this uh, chat room or Zoom room and those who are not with us today because we have very busy schedule and a daily basis and and um, teaching management and leading and mentoring, coaching students to jobs and other areas. So meetings all around in, in the college. And thank you very much, Knightsbridge Academy, for arranging this webinar with a um, good number of dentists from all around the globe. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Claire to interject at any moment, please, and take over from me, because you uh, you're, you're doing this on a daily basis now and speaking to many organizations and many dentists and many doctors also, because we don't only recruit or teach and train dentists, we recruit and teach and train doctors also. Um, okay, so my name is Mahar Al Masri. I'm the Dean and the CEO of the college, and I'm one of the founders. This college was um, established in 2013, that's almost 10 years, uh, but it was under uh, a different institution. So it was under BBP University, and then we carved out and re-evolved and established the College of Medicine and Dentistry under the current management structure in 2018. So that's five years ago. I will share some of the slides, if that's okay. And let me let me try to do this, because sometimes it's a bit technical. So can you see my slide? Yes, we see yeah. them, Maha. Wonderful, thank you. So as I said, my name is Mahar Al-Masri. I'm a dentist by qualification, right? I'm just like yourself, guys. I've done a DDS degree from Damascus University. I did uh, oral surgery training between the year 95 to 2002, 2003. And then I did a uh, MSc degree at the Royal London. Um, all oral surgery training was at the Royal London as well, so in London. I did um, MSc degree at the London and then implant scholarship in Germany. And then I I came back and I had a PhD degree and I was teaching at the, at the, the London Royal London Hospital for five years. I did my PhD in tissue regeneration. And, uh, and then I moved to Warwick University from Warwick. Um, I was leading an auto surgery program, and then I, in 2013, I established this college under BBP University, which, as I mentioned earlier, we carved out in 2018. I have done an MBA in higher education management as well, and I led the the carve out from BBP to establish this. And we currently work under the validation of Ulster University. And on this slide, you will see um, our logo. The and the logo of Ulster University, and you see uh, what defines us in a way. That's uh, the college that looks after the future of the students. So our college, your future, and we uh, we think that they very much connected together. So who we are um, again, 
uh, the, our, tra our history traces to 2013, the first private institution to deliver postgraduate dentistry in the UK. So we are a private in provider, validated by Ulster University, which is a public provider. We focus on wide range of training programs for dental team. We very much center student centered and we do not compromise on quality assurance. Quality is number one. And we started with 10 postgraduate programs and we did expand the portfolio for programs and we went into medical as well. And our vision is to provide um, basically or to be the global leader of education and training, very much dedicated to the profession in healthcare. So it's not only dentistry. We have also a mission. We have promise, provide pioneered clinical, clinically focused teaching, and compromise excellence, innovation, and again develop clinical leaders. And we work with the employers big time. 97, at least 97% of our teaching staff, they have a master's degree or professional education. I mean, this is an older slide. So we teach 30 students from 30 countries. Now we're proud to say they're over 70. We communicated in 2019 with 80% dental professionals. Until now, we graduated more than 500 students. In 2019, we prepared more than 100 new dentists to the profession. And now I'm saying to you, it's over 500. We delivered education to over 100 dental care professionals in the UK. And globally, between 2013 until now, we communicated with over 200,000 dentists on global. So we are uh, proud of our statistics. Very much the, um, the most international college in the UK, especially in dentistry, we focus on employability building career pathways for our clinicians, wide scope between CPDs to professional diplomas, MSCs and PhDs. Career support is a priority for us, as I mentioned earlier. We commit to enable and enhance career for all graduates, career enhanced. And we diversify into a different range of programs. And our programs, they go from one area to another. Again, uh, students, they come from all around the globe over 70 now. Our programs range from restorative to orthodontics, oral surgery, endodontics, advanced in dental practice, which is the focus of today. And this is one of our graduates is saying, this is really the best dentistry education you can get. We have state-of-art facilities in central Birmingham from simulation centers to AV facilities, audio audiovisual, seminar rooms, lecture theater, and we have the best faculty in dentistry um, between all dental schools in the UK. And we do challenge UK dental schools with the faculty, actually. We have them international, really international. Professor Raj Rajarayan, who is the head of the HDP program, vast experience, lots of qualifications. And he received an, an award from, um, from Her uh, Majesty, the Queen uh, of uh, United Kingdom, Queen Elizabeth, he received the Officer of the Order of British Empire, that's OBE, only for the services dental education. Professor Alani, who's well, very well known teacher in TMJ disorders, um, Professor Riaz Yaw, Professor of uh, Prostodontics, again very well known in occlusion and uh, and management of um, fully full mouth rehabilitation. Professor Dominique Chasupolo. Again, Professor of Periodontics, very well known in Europe. And she's she's a head of periodontics in our group. Professor uh, Flavio Pisani, another periodontist from Italy. Professor Golati, who's head of oral surgery. Professor Bilal Ahmad, associate professor in oral surgery implantology with doctorate degree from, from Switzerland. Education from uh, Harvard University, fellowship and education. Uh, from Northern Ireland, London, Edinburgh, and he's originally uh, a graduate from University of Hong Kong, which is number one institution in dentistry in the world. Associate Professor Faria Doma, again, a specialist or surgeon with lots of experience, and Professor Noha Saudi, who's one of three clinical microbiologists in the UK, 
in in uh, in the oral cavity, and she is she is head of research in our college. Professor Ali Ganem, head of facial aesthetics, etc. So we have large number of uh, uh, very well regarded and esteemed um, faculty. They're very much international. Um, back to you. If you want me to talk more about the college, that's fine. If you want me to talk about the program, it's okay. Um, Claire, if you want to highlight some other aspects, please feel free. Thank you very much, Professor Meyer. Uh, Claire, if you have any anything you want to highlight, you can do it for now or later on. Or uh, if not now, uh, we'll be happy if we can hear from Marwa. Marwa, are you here? Hi, Hakan. Hi, Marwa. How thank are you? So you? Much. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice. It, it will be better to see you but I think we can't see you at the moment <laughs> <laughs> um, um I, to be honest I started the video but I don't know why it's not turning on um oh I don't um, know I can uh, yeah, yeah, I it should, should be okay now can you just try it again please yes please um, coming perfect can, can you ask me how am i am now at the moment again uh how are you now <laughs> i am better now perfect okay <laughs> great great so, great to see you everyone i, I don't um it's um uh, it would be nice to see the candidates as well but um uh it's it's understandable if if um if if they yeah. Um, they they don't like to switch the cameras on oh yeah and, and also we don't have such a big uh screen i think uh, <laughs> so uh, we will be more than happy if you can just inform us about a program you are leading, uh, advanced general dental practice, and um, sure. and also can you just introduce yourself for us. I know you bought for the attendees, please. Excellent, thank you so much, Hakan. So let me start by introducing myself. My my name is Marwa Kassam. Um I am the director of um, academic program at the college. Uh, one of the master programs I um, I closely work um, um, alongside a, um, a pioneer team is the advanced um, general dental practice. So it is as as I think the the dean has covered um, um, the the main highlights about the program. Um, um, it is indeed a unique program that is designed uh, for um, international dentists who are planning to pursue. Um, and relocate um, um, into the UK, develop their dental career and work as, as dental care professional, um, ultimately as dentists. The program is structured and, um, and designed um, closely to prepare students and support students to pass the um, overseas exam. Um, I am sure everyone is aware that um, international dentists, they are required to pass um, a uh, an exam set by the GDC, the General Dental Council, referred to as the ORE, or the um, um, a, a, another or um, um, another equivalent exam set by the Royal College um, uh, of Surgeons, the LDS. Um, both exam one one of each is uh, will qualify the students um, or the international candidates to register and practice dentistry in the UK. Um, um, although it's it's that, that this is the main focus or the core of the program, however, uh, it's 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 more than just preparing or training the student for the exam. Uh, it's it's a master degree that has many other aspects to it. Um, it works on building the academic and research skills, introducing um, uh, students um, um, into um, and build their their, their um, evidence base. Uh, and a critical uh, understanding of the evidence. Um, it's, um, it prepares them and equip them with the uh, needed knowledge and the clinical skills required to practice dentistry safely in the UK. This is by uh, introducing or um, uh, training them on the um, legal framework, um, understanding patient care, what, what, what are the GDC requirements, how dentistry is practiced in the UK. Um, um, it's um, part of this program is connecting students to professionals. So um, we we emphasize or encourage the um, 
um, active uh, networking skills, um, and we support students' employability, which um, which has um, already covered by, um, or um, as as the dean mentioned. Um, the, the, the program has um, a, a number of modules um, um, closely um, designed at, or, uh, or structured to, to, um, to tailor or prepare students for, for, as I said, the exam. So there's the basic sciences uh, module and the examination, di um, examination diagnosis and treatment planning module. The, 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 the learning outcomes of those modules um, they they target preparation for ORE and LDS part one, um, examination diagnosis and treatment planning. It also prepares students for the um, um, the OSCE part of uh, of the exams. Um, practical skills training, intensive practical skills training on mannequin led by an expert in the field, an expert tutor who who. Uh, work closely um, in the with the with the with the team who leads the exam. So she is always um, up to date and um, uh, knowledgeable of what are the updates or changes uh, on the exam requirement. Students will receive around ten cycles of of um, of the practical skills training um, in um, using materials and models that um, identical to the exam requirement. Um, as I said, um, um, building the research skills is or the, um, the critic, critical understanding is a core as well. Um, um, research module, we encourage the students to, um, to complete a clinical audit, uh, something that will enhance, um, uh, enhance their understanding of what is an audit, it's, um, which is an element required during their uh, practical future um, um, career. Um, if they wish to 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 complete a research project, um, they they are they they also have the opportunity to do so. Who, those who have a background in research or they wish um, to uh, to take this um, this uh, opportunity, um, it's it's also available. The clinical governance module is a um, 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 a well structured module to address all the um, communication, understanding the uh, legal framework. Um, how patient records is kept, and uh, which is, um, it's uh, yes, it's it's essential towards uh, them understanding the system or how how uh, dentistry is practiced. However, it's it's also an important component as part of um, preparation for the exam. Um, that's 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 the, uh, a a sort of um, overall a view of uh, of how the the the, the program is structured um, um learning outcomes is assessed applying a range of um, um assessment approaches that include practical uh, oskis um uh, students are encouraged to to participate in mocks uh, online mocks and practical mocks um to to enhance their confidence and um ensure that they are uh, well prepared and they they understand the importance of exam techniques. Thank you very much, Marwa. It's very summarized and brief and compact information. Thank you so much. Now, uh, I will be more than happy, Claire, if you can just uh, mention about this scholarship process and the benefits of this scholarship, please. Uh, and can yeah. you introduce yourself when you sure. start? Thanks, Hakan. So I'm Claire O'Leary. I'm the Director of External Relations and Partnerships at the College of Medicine and Dentistry. And uh, for September 2023, um, we have a, a generous range of scholarships to offer uh, candidates, candidates who are interested in, in our one year Masters in Advanced General Dental Practice. So in a moment, I'm going to talk to that to, about that. Um, I'm going to ask my colleagues, Joe and Pam, if they could look at the Q&A. There's a couple of questions in there. I'm sure we can get answers to those candidates now. So let me screen share with you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can see that. Okay, great. So um, the scholarship program is aimed at uh, international dentists who are, who are high achievers. Um, they've done well. Uh, in their bachelor of de uh, the bachelor of dental surgery, they've um, achieved either a first class degree or an upper second class degree, and they have very good English as well. 
Um, we've been working with some of the leading uh, dental corporates around the UK to set up um, these uh, employee employer scholarships. As you might know, in the UK, there is um, a, a critical shortage of um, registered dentists. Uh, there's a terrible shortage um, uh, of dentists. Patients are struggling to get appointments with a dentist. It's uh, making lots of national headlines in the UK and has been for a couple of years now. And the College of Medicine and Dentistry, we want to do our bit uh, for, the, for the national crisis. And so we've created this program where we're matching highly talented international dentists uh, with dental employers in the UK who desperately want dentists to work for them, uh, whose patients really need to see them. And in the in the in the mid in the middle part is our master's program, which as 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 Marwa has explained, helps to bring up uh, international uh, skills and dental knowledge uh, to, to, to UK standards. Um, not saying that international is inferior, but there are just some differences in relation to uh, patient communication and uh, ethics and professional standards that are specific to the UK. And so our master's programme covers that. Um, what's new for this year are these scholarships, and we're going to talk to you through these now. So we have 150 scholarships to award to, to um, candidates who demonstrate that they have the academic and clinical um, levels uh, th that are a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, and so we have some scholarships worth 30%, 150 of these to be precise. We also have a smaller number. We have two scholarships that are worth 100% of the, of the tuition fees. So effectively, you, you would only have to cover your own living expenses for the, for the year of the master's. Um, and we have a smaller number of um, scholarships that are worth 50% of the tuition fee. And um, what we're, what we're, how we're doing that is uh, how we're um, finding eligible uh, students to award these scholarships to is through uh, a two-stage um, selection process. So first of all, the, this is our list of eligibility criteria, as I had mentioned, strong English, strong performance in dentistry as demonstrated from your bachelor's degree. And the first step of the process um, is to complete uh, a two hour multiple choice question exam about general dentistry. Candidates start by filling in an online scholarship application form. It's a very short form. You could do it on your mobile phone. It's literally asking you for name, contact details, you, the, the, the type of dental degree that you have, your institution and when you did it. Uh, then we need to collect a £20 uh, examination fee. This is not refundable and it's just covered the cost of administering the exam. Um, the exam is open now and it will close on the 20th of June. Uh, it says 14th, but actually it's the 20th. We have it because we've had a lot of demand. We are extending that window and it will close on the 20th of June. Um, we will look at the results from the first stage from the online exam. And for the first 150 top scorers, we will award a 30% tuition fee scholarship. And we'll notify candidates uh, whether they have been awarded this on the 21st of June. For the top scoring candidates, those who score within the top 50 of, of all the students taking the exam, they will be invited not only to receive the 30%, but to compete for an alternative higher uh, scholarship, one of the 100% or the 50% scholarship. And that one will be measured by um, a practical exam. So we're running practical exams. Um, it will be a, a two preparations conducted on a phantom head. And this will be taking place in a choice of four locations. So we, we are doing it starting in Dubai, and then we have a, a, a practical session in Birmingham for anybody who is locally based. Uh, we have um, a practical exam in Kerala in India on the 1st of July, and finishing in uh, Marmara University, Istanbul in Turkey on the 3rd of July. So we will look at the practical exam results. 
and we will invite the, the very top scorers to a, an online Viber exam, just a final um, assessment of their uh, ability and their communication skills. Um, and then we'll notify all the candidates um, that they are the higher candidates of the results and whether they have won one of these higher value scholarships um, by the 7th of July. Um, we're going to be looking at their scores in the online exam. We're going to be looking at um, their practical uh, performance. We're going to look at um, their the degree and, and, and the degree classification. Um, and then we need candidates to um, confirm whether they want to take the scholarship and then send in all of the documentary evidence to prove they have the, uh, the they meet the eligibility criteria and um, to, to they will need to pay the course deposit. Um, we, we take the course deposit up front um, so that it's easier when you're um, submitting your financial evidence uh, for your student visa. You have a lot, a lot less to um, show because you've already paid a good chunk of it um, uh, to, to the college for, for your tuition fees in advance and they will be taken care of. Okay, so the, the main message, and then I should whiz down to the end, um, we will sponsor you for your student visa. C candidates need to prepare their finances. We'll help you with the visa support, their pre-arrival, if you're bringing dependents with you. And you might realize that um, at the moment, the uh, UK uh, immigration rules for students, including postgraduate students, permit you to bring dependents with you. But from January 2024, the rules are going to change and postgraduate students will no longer be permitted to bring their dependents. So those candidates who are um, looking to come and are able to start in September entry, they still will have the right to bring uh, their dependents with them. People, will, you will go through our course, you'll go through all our intensive um, preparation for the uh, overseas registration exam. During the course, we will give you, um, uh, we will enroll you on a dental nursing uh, program at no extra cost. And this is specifically to enable you to go into part-time work at a local um, dental practice. You, you would work as a dental nurse, that would be the capacity, um, and you would you'd be able to receive part-time earnings through this. And it's great because you're still in a, a clinical setting and you're learning how clinical, um, dent clinical practice working in the UK. And then after you've graduated, you'll sit your overseas registration exam. We will have given you lots and lots of practice. We hope that you will pass first time. And when you do, we'll support you um, getting onto the register with the General Dental Council. Um, the scholarships that we're awarding, they all come with a guaranteed job. As I said to you at the beginning, uh, Dental practices, dental employers in the UK are desperate for more workers, for more dentists, qualified dentists. So they're willing to um, invest upfront in the cost of your education in return for your commitment to work with them. And they will sponsor you for up to five years um, during your, your, your as you start with them. And after five years um, working in the UK, provided you followed the immigration rules, you will be uh, eligible to apply for what we call indefinite leave to remain, and meaning you can stay uh, studying, working, living in the UK without uh, the need for visas. Um, the, the remuneration is, is, is really good. Um, you can expect to be earning between uh, 40, uh, 35 to 50,000 uh, pounds in your first year. Actually, today we were speaking to some um, some some Scottish uh, dental providers, and they said in Scotland, um, first year dentists can expect to earn up to one hundred thousand pounds a year working full time and working uh, in the NHS or a, a mixed NHS dental practice, which is a, a significant um, salary for um, for a first year dentist. Um, other places in the UK, the first year is between. 45 to 50 and the second year 70,000 to 100,000. So we're offering this whole end-to-end -end, um, opportunity. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend if, if you are an internationally qualified dentist and you have an appetite to come and work in the UK, you're looking to take your career uh, internationally, please do consider applying now. 
um, the deadline for entry for this September um, will be the 20th of June because that's when the online exam um, uh, closes. So if you if you if you send us your form, you pay the 20 pounds examination fee, sit the exam, um, and then we can consider you for the 2023 intake. Okay, Hakan, I've spoken a lot. I'll hand back to you. No, thank you so much, Claire, for the information. So, so we have been informed about the school, about AGDP, about the um, scholarship. And I would request from Professor Mayim, if he's available now, um, to uh, inform us about what is going to happen after we graduate from AGDP. So the route to be a dentist, the ORE exam, or how, how it happens. So I will, I will be happy if you can just um, explain that, please. Thank, thank you, Hakan. So historically, um, all international dentists, they will need to uh, pass the registration exam, which is uh, currently called the ORE exam in the UK. Um, the shortage in workforce in the UK has uh, sort of... Um, indicated that we need more exams because they, they, they we we had problems with exam slots within the last few years and after the 8th of march 2023 the government has indicated to gdc that you need to open more exam centers and that will happen in the year 24 and the year 25 so we have information that there will be loads more exam centers and exam slots in the year 24 and 25 and uh, students who finish our program they'll be well suited and trained to uh, complete the ORE exam during the program we also train students to uh, undertake the LDS exam which is another exam that is done by the Royal College of Surgeons either exams will lead to registration in the GDC so finishing the ORE part one and, or, uh, and two, or LDS part one and two, will lead to registration in the GDC. And we are, will be training the students in, intensively on these uh, exams, basically. Um, after finishing the exam, uh, students will be provided with guaranteed job opportunities, uh, mentorship towards NHS performer number, and within two years, they will be basically working in a dental practice or they might be opening their own dental practice if they want to. But uh, the current scholarship provisions are for, for work or employability and um, working with a dental corporate. And that's a guaranteed opportunity for those who will pass the exam. So back to you, Hakan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Maher. Um, there is a and raised but i'm just giving that so normally i was planning to do that on uh, Q&A session but let's give a small um, break for that so um maria mohammed um you can please feel free to ask your question um uh, my question hello yes we can hear you Okay, my question is today, um, I saw this post on Instagram about um, you are um, inviting international dentists for this great opportunity. So I applied in this, but uh, I found a difficulty in um, transferring the uh, pounds, 20 pounds, uh, like payment method, uh, was not working. The, uh, there was something. Uh, Mara, Mar there, there was a problem today, but we've just we've, yeah. we had a technical problem. But I think it, if it's it's working now. So if you want to try it again, we did have a a, a problem earlier on, but it is now resolved. Okay. Um, my second question is. Thank you. My second question is. It's important uh, to uh, give IELTS examination before sitting in the a multiple choice question exam no no you don't need to do that before um do, do you have okay. do you have have you ever taken an ielts test before no i haven't taken any ielts exam before 
Okay, so for, um, what we're saying is that uh, you don't need to take an IELTS before you sit the online exam. Um, but in, or, in order to be uh, to receive one of the higher scholarships, say you do really well in the exam, say you're in the top 50 performers, um, we would want to consider you for a 50% or a 100% uh, scholarship. But at that point, we'd need to know that you, you were going to be able to get an IELTS certificate. And the okay. latest we'd need to see that certificate, I think, is, is it early July, Joe and Pam? Correct. Yeah, we'll need right. to have that uh, first week of July. As well as that, if you are granted the 30%, we will need to see that you have a good understanding of English. And we will put a link in the chat box of all the alternatives that you can give. I this isn't the only one that we accept. Yeah. So if so, you've got okay. that slight difference. If if you go, if you are lucky enough to receive the thirty uh, percent tuition fee scholarship, we don't have to see IELTS. We can accept some alternative measures of your English competency. But if you're going for one of the higher scholarships, we will need to see a, an IELTS certificate um, in a in a few weeks' time. Okay. Uh, my question is that is. Um... Multiple choice, after giving the multiple choice question, we will be having our practical exam too. So it, is, it, is it will be mandatory for us to give IELTS before the practical exam or it can be given after practical exam? Yeah, it can be given after the practical exam and the practical exam will only be for the, the top performers, the top 50 performers in the online exam. Um, you, you, we, won't, we won't insist on seeing IELTS at that stage, but um, I guess you need to be confident that you will be able to um, get, 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 the, a, get the IELTS uh, to yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Maria. I think uh, you ask your questions. Is there any question from you? No. No, no not yet. Thank okay. you. We will uh, allow. But before that, Claire, uh, can you please explain more about, you just briefly said, um, about new visa regulations. Actually, the, how does visa system works? So what they need initially? Because I know it is not a, as uh, they have the cash number, it's not mm -hmm. difficult to get this visa. But there are some good opportunities, uh, especially for the uh, for after the education and during the yeah. education, but yeah. changing soon. So can you just uh, inform us about that, please? Sure. Yes. Um, I mean the 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 student visa. It's a it's a really good visa, um, and. The, the, uh, the college, together with our partner, Ulster University, we have a very high visa success rate. The students that we sponsor with ACAS, we have, they, they, they get their visas because, you know, we sponsor highly talented individuals who are qualified dentists. Um, so, so, so that's a good point. Um, students are permitted to work for 20 hours a week uh, during the term time and they can take a, a part-time job and, and work um, sort of an unlimited number of hours during the, the university vacation periods. Um, students also, are, if they've been here for a, a, at least a one-year course, they are eligible to apply for what's called the graduate route, which is a post-study work type of visa. And so some of our students do that. And sometimes if, they, if there's been a gap between finishing, um, their graduating from their master's and waiting for their registration exam seat, some of them have decided I'm going to stay in the UK, I'm going to apply for the, the graduate route and stay in the UK. And, and you, this, this route allows you to take any kind of um, full-time work, um, obviously not as a, a dentist until you've passed your registration exam, but but as a in, in, in any kind of um, other field. Um, at the moment, uh, the student visa rules permit you to bring uh, dependents with you to stay with you during the duration of your of your program. But that is changing. Um, the, the UK government concerned that um, the number of dependents has really rocketed and so they want to put some brakes on that and they want to limit um, 
um, so only PhD students will be allowed to bring their uh, dependents from January. Uh, master students um, will will not be allowed to bring their dependents from January twenty four. Does that answer your question, Hakan? Is that the sort of thing? Um, yes, thank you so much. So that was very uh, important, a like key point. So we don't want uh, the students uh, to miss this opportunity. So yeah, I, 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 I suppose we just just to add to that. Um, you know that we have to just allow um, enough time for things. We prepare our students well, and that's partly why we have a very high visa success rate. Um, so students will need to be ready. Uh, one of the most challenging areas and the kind of key reason if there are ever visa refusals and, and generally across all universities, if it's going to be a refusal, it's going to be based on finances, not having enough uh, finances sitting in the bank for the required 28 days and being able to bring evidence of that. So, you know, we'll be working with uh, our, our student candidates to make sure that they've, they've put that required money set aside um, in, in, in good time uh, and we'll do that and make sure we that they, they have taken that action before we um, generate the CAS and provide them with the CAS. But yeah, getting your finances ready, getting your English ready um, and making sure you've, you, you've sent um, all the documentary evidence we ask for in good time. That's uh, key to getting a, a nice smooth visa, student visa application through. Okay, thank you so much. I would like to make a very brief summarize that uh, now College of Medicine and Dentistry is the unique um, school for aiming for the dentists and medical doctors um, for their graduation, after their graduation, and uh, for masters and PhD. And today we are talking about AGDP program, Advanced mm. General Dental Practice. Uh, it's aiming to gain more dentists to the UK for the dentists out yeah. of the UK and we have a great scholarship opportunity which is ending soon on 20th and they can apply from our website from the landing page and uh, to the to the exam so um, after the graduation they have a guaranteed job opportunity depending on their GDC registration that's right yeah they must pass totally, them. Yeah, yeah which is totally dependent depend to the to ORE exam. Wow. That's right. Am I, yeah. am I, okay. I, I'm a good student. I think good listener. Thank you. <laughs> so thank, thank you very much. Now we are uh, doing the Q&A session. So the panelists, if you have anything to, to add, please feel free to add. So Joe and Pam, yes. can you see the uh, hands raised, Joe? Yeah, I um, we've been going through the Q&A and um, I just thought it might be easier if I read out some of the questions and maybe, um, Claire, you can sort of uh, give some answers out to some for the, some of these. Um, we've answered the vast majority of them and I know some people have just uh, joined, so I may repeat a couple of the questions as well. Um, so first question is, can we apply now to join from January 2024 for the course? Yes, uh, for scholarships, uh, my understanding is that the scholarship uh, window is for the September intake. But Claire, please, um, if that has changed, um, do clarify. No, that's 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 it. The, these scholarships are are for the September intake. Um, you know, we we're we're interested in candidates who are you know we want to hear from candidates who are interested in the January um, twenty twenty four. Um, we we would like their contacts. We'd like to work with them, answer their questions. But um, the, these uh, one hundred and fifty uh, scholarships are aimed at the September twenty three intake. Perfect. Um... It's got a question here. Uh, is the final year BDS student apply for this scholarship? Uh, depends when you're due to graduate. If you're going to be graduated in time to start in September 2023, then yes, you can be a final year BDS student. Um, and so we've got, uh, I'm an orthodontist in Turkey, ortho speciality degree. It's equal to PhD in my country. Should I pass the same pathway as well? Answer is yes. Uh, this is open to everybody. Um, as, as long as you're an overseas dentist who wants to come and live and work in the UK, this is the program that prepares you for that. 
Yes, there's, there's, you know, all internationally qualified dentists and specialists. Uh, my understanding is they have to pass the uh, the same overseas registration exam um, to, okay. to start with. Um, another question from Ekram: uh, What will be asked? To, what will I be asked to do in the practical exam? I understand that there is a reading list on our page, so please go and have have a look on there. In terms of the actual questions, of course, we can't tell you the questions now. I'm sure you can understand um, because it is an exam, Akram. I could add to that, Joe. Yep, we've got two, two exams. The first one, as you say, is a multiple choice question uh, all about general dentistry. And there is a reading list, as you've said, on the bottom of our um, web page. Um, the second exam is a practical exam, and that's going to be on a phantom head. And we're going to ask uh, those candidates to do two preparations. Uh, um, and I, I don't think it's in the public domain what they are, but they're, they're, they're regular uh, preparations that, that you'll be used to and um, we'll, we'll be assessing the performance um, on those teeth. Um, and that would just be on a, a phantom head. OK. Um, are there any is there any examination uh, exemptions? Sorry, uh, from IELTS examination. I'm a Canadian citizen and I studied in full English. Uh, dentistry a thumble. There is potential for IELTS examination if you're a Canadian citizen. Um, we have a list of countries um, who are exempted from IELTS um, and we're happy to share those with you. If you drop, drop us an email, we can send you a list for that. In fact, I'll find that now and I'll put it in the chat group whilst uh, my colleague Pam continues with Q&A. Yeah, I was just going to say, Joe, we've got a few hands that are raised. Shall we go through them? and see what questions we get. Yeah. Can I can I before before we uh, we address the other questions uh, Joe it's an important point um the uh, the exemptions of arts I think the best source um uh, of information regarding exemptions of arts is the GDC uh, website. Um I encourage everyone to um to go on the GDC website. Uh, and look uh, to what are the recognized exemptions um um, to IELTS, uh, because um, regardless of, of the program, um, um, ORE um, IELTS is one of the all um, recognized exemptions is, uh, is a requirement for applying for ORE or LDS. So I don't think this case can be exempted, Joe. Um, um, if, if the BDS was completed in Istanbul, um, that, 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 that needs to be reviewed closely. It has to be completed in a country where English is the first language or the university is a um, recognized um, university. Correct. Okay, so let's go through the questions. So we have a hand raised by Ibele. Do you want to ask your question? Do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, so did did you who did you allow to ask question? Uh, Pam, is it Ibele? That's the one, yeah. So, so um, I'm trying to make unmute. Okay, if not, we can go. We do, no, we can't do that. You, okay, okay, let's then try. We go down to the next one. Yeah, we can go to the next one, please. Um, Chamlan, let's allow you to talk. Do you want to ask your question? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I'm a Dr. Nam from Cambodia. Actually, I'm a, uh, an orthodontist, and um, I, I would like to know uh, whether this scholarship uh, is limited to the age for the application. Because now I'm 42 years old already, but uh, I don't know whether they still accept or not. Uh, is the question is there an age limit to this scholarship? Yes. No. Yes. No, there's no age limit. That this is a uh, this is based on uh, skills and uh, academic and cl clinical merit. Um, so that you no, there isn't. Um, if you can pass, if you if you've got a, a bachelor of dentistry, um, if you can pass our um, uh, online exam, if you can 
and then you may and then if you can if you can do really well in the online exam and you're in the top 150 uh, candidates and you can provide all the uh, the evidence for the eligibility criteria your english your dentistry degree and this this age is not uh, a factor so that's great thank you thank you for your question uh, we've got another question that's coming through you've had your hand raised for a while after Roman, do you want to go with your question yes how are you ma'am can you hear me yes, i can okay i have a question that uh, that there is a test uh, tomorrow am i right regarding the scholarship uh, the the mm -hmm. on yeah the online exam yes will be open tomorrow yeah uh, okay can you tell me that uh, how this will exam be this will be more a clinical based or theory based so that we can prepare accordingly ourselves uh, okay i think that might be more of a question for for marwa if she can answer that uh, can you please repeat the question I want to ask that tomorrow is tomorrow there is a scholarship test. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask that this test will be more theoretically based or clinically based so that we can prepare us accordingly. The, the multiple choice questions. Yeah, okay. the, 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 the questions, they are th um, mainly theoretical. However, they can include um, the uh, application, clinical application knowledge. Okay. They can, they can cover clinical aspect or um, ethical uh, law and ethics of practicing dentistry. dentistry. Um, okay. But um, of course, um, they, 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 they are mainly around the um, theoretical uh, theoretical um, topics. Okay, I have graduated from full English. Uh, I have graduated from a recognized university in English. So am I exempted from IELTS if I clear this exam, online exam? Um, where did you graduate from? If you don't mind me asking, uh, I graduated from Pakistan. Okay, uh, um, it's uh, uh, um, we had cases where the GDC uh, was happy or accepted, um, accepted um, um, recognized university where where the teaching. So you need a letter from the university to confirm that teaching assessment and communication was all. Um, in English was all completed in English during your years of study. Um, however, um, um, go on the GDC website. It's it's as I said, it's the best source of information. Um, exemptions to eyes is always subject to um, uh, to rejection. Yeah, the solid yeah. ground is is the eyes. And also, uh, and, yeah, Marwa, if I can if I can add in, there's actually two two stages uh, where we're thinking about English, and the first stage is about the the type of English that will be sat that will satisfy the UKVI for the awarding of a student visa, mm -hmm. and. Um, Ulster University who gives the CAS, they will kind of decide how best to, to manage that and they'll decide what they will accept and what they won't. So is that the English to be uh, for, for recognition for your student visa. And then the second point, as Mawa says, is about the English that will be recognised by the GDC when you're taking your overseas registration exam and you want to be uh, and you pass it and you want to be admitted to the register. So we've got two two. Um, two moments where English is a consideration and the first one will be will be about in connection with your student visa and for that uh, Pam has has put in the chat um, uh, the uh, link to elster.ac.uk the um, English language requirements um, that, that, that the things that we can accept uh, for in order to give you a CAS for your student visa. Okay ma'am thank you so much. Okay no problem. Thank you. The next question, we have a hand raise from Femi. Do you want to ask your question? Unmute yourself. Femi, do you want to ask your question? Ebele, no? you, you unmuted. You, Ebele, um, unmuted. So. We can go to Ebele, yeah, if you're ready with your question. So how can we were we it invited Opayemi? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hear you. Who are we speaking okay, this, to? Okay, Ebele. Okay, hello. Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Nigeria. 
Mm -hmm. I, I came in a little bit late and my, my main question is to know how much the program costs and the duration of the master's program. Sure. So the, the master's program, if there is no scholarship applied, is £37,500 and it's a 12-month program. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Do you want to go with your question? I saw you. Okay. Yeah. Where are you from? Thank you. Am I on? Yes, yes we yes. can hear you. Oh, thank you very much. I is a great privilege to be able to participate in this um, 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 meeting today. Though my, I, I didn't join on, uh, I, I didn't get that, um, the beginning part of the meeting, I couldn't um, get it because of network issues. Okay. My name is Okoyemi. I want to ask about the, the issue of the scholarship thing. For me to be able to apply for the scholarship, do I have to, um, do, what are the requirements that I need? I didn't, I missed that part. And um, Okay. Is, I, Yes, I want so that just a step by step, this is so that I can start up the appli applying. Okay, um, I'd, I'd, I'd tell you uh, what I'm sharing on the screen is, is our scholarship web page. So it's worth you having a look at this. But in answer to your question, uh, can you see the screen, Pam? Yes, I've okay. also put the link in the chat box. Brilliant. Okay, so here's our eligibility criteria. So, um, you're going to have to uh, perform uh, really well in a, on, a two hour online multiple choice question exam about general dentistry. Um, you must have, uh, for the scholarship, you must have at least a first class or upper second class uh, Bachelor of Dental Surgery or, or the equivalent uh, type of dental degree from an interna recognized international dental school. Um, we would like to see your. Um, evidence that you are scoring very highly. Okay, and then uh, you must have um, English language as we've previously discussed, uh, if to, to be considered for, for one of the higher scholarships, 50% or 100% scholarship, we're looking for IELTS 7.0. For the 30% scholarship, we would accept IELTS 6.5 or an equivalent to an IELTS certificate. Um, in the chat, you'll see a link to the types of um, alternative measures of English that, that we and the University of Ulster will accept. Um, but for the, the high scholarships, we do insist upon an IELTS certificate showing 7.0. Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes, to understand. Thank you very much. The okay. I have the issue. I did my. I have to write another one because the one that I wrote um, two years ago has expired. Can I see use it? Although I finished from a, a, a university where your English was a means of um of training during my undergraduate days, even up to the postgraduate level. So I don't know. Can that be still prevent me from writing the exam? If I don't, if if um, prob maybe pro possibly writing the IELTS later, um, um, later in the in the in the in the year or something. Which which country are you from? Sorry. Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Okay, Joy. <laughs> Or the MSc itself. So this is not in relation to registering with the GDC. If you if you're from Nigeria and you hold a uh, WAEC or NECO, um, the link that Ham has posted in there, you'll be able to see what scores uh, the university will accept. So if you have a grade C six, um, C five, or C four. Um, I believe Ulster University will exempt you for the program itself. But of course, in regards to the GDC, um, you will re be required to take an IELTS. 100%. When you, do scare, when you do share these results with us, you'll also have to share your 
the pin number with us so we can access the results. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I, I would like to, I'm praying that the, this opportunity, we, we, I will gain one of it because uh, my wife does left for UK now. And I'm believing God that I'm going to join her very soon as a, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Eshwa, do you want to ask your question? Hi. Can you hear us? Can you hear us okay? If not, we can come back to you. I think we can go through Dr. Abdul Rahman, then we can come back maybe for. Dr. Yeah. Do you want to just um, um, unmute them? I'm just trying to find them in the list. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Okay. I have asked a question. Mm -hmm. So I am. I have, I have another question I will try to ask in some in next few minutes. Okay, if you have a question now, you can ask now. Okay. What was your Actually, question? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear Actually, you. Actually, I, I have graduated in June 2023. So our result have, haven't come yet. So mm -hmm. as I am seeing on the application form, there is written that what is the grade of your degree? Is it upper class, it is lower middle class or whatever it is. So what should I write on this now? You're on mute, Claire. You're on mute. Sorry. When, when do you expect to get your final result and grade? Ma'am, it will come in about uh, next two to three weeks, hopefully. Ah, okay. Um, do, do you have a predicted grade based on your previous uh, scores so far? Yes, I have. Uh, I have achieved eighty plus. Uh, yeah. Percentage, percentage. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my advice would be to to put your predicted grade because I think okay. on on the form it says, um, "Have you achieved the degree, or is it? Are you in process?" I think I think there's a differentiation. So I put your predicted grade and and put that. The, the, the date when you expect to complete and if and if it is you if you say that you're going to get the result in a few weeks then you still will have time um to to join us for september dr roman okay, thank you okay ma'am thank wanna, you um quickly check when you say you'll get your result in two to three weeks will you get your degree certificate in two to three weeks mm. no i will not get my degree i will just get my result online in next two to three weeks and after uh, this uh, in about two to three months i will get my degree ah, ah, so, may have a problem. so you wouldn't get a provisional uh, like a, a provisional certificate or yes you... like kind of that if you were to get a provisional certificate with a degree transcript mm. by for example the latest fourth of july then we can accept you for the september intake if not, you will need to go forward for the January intake. Okay, ma'am. I will. I am trying this one. Okay. So if you get your documentation in place, we're happy to take you for this intake. Yes, I am trying from this is September intake. No problem. That's fine. Do you have any more questions? No, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'll just read out a few from the Q and A. Um, Alishba says what are we to prepare for clinical tests uh do you mean the think, online exam i think they mm, good question actually at least but do you mind um just elaborating on that do you mean the online exam or the practical exam note that the top people will be invited for the practical exam so everybody yeah. would initially be focusing on the online exam yeah and I, I'll just add um, to this as well. Um, a few people have sort of 
uh, mentioned this, the, the university or the college does not um, give you the job as a dental nurse. Uh, no. Prepare you to, to work as a dental nurse. Um, That's right. Because a few people have mentioned that they, it sounds like uh, the impression I get is they'll get a job through the college or the university. That's not the case. We prepare you um, to work as a dental nurse. Yeah, yeah. We enroll you on um, National Diploma of Dental Nurse Training. And because you're enrolled on that type of training, uh, you, you are able to apply for a, a role as a dental nurse in, in any local practice. But the student themselves will have to go to the practices and and and, and ask for a role. But there is there's quite a lot of demand for student nurses, so we don't anticipate this will be difficult um, to find work in this capacity. Do you want to go on to the next question, Joe? Um, I'm a specialist dentist in my country. Uh, is this specialization provide some priority for scholarship? Um, your specialism is not going to provide you with um, a priority. However, um, as previously mentioned, your grades uh, will be looked at. So um, that's good, um, but your specialism is not going to provide you priority. Um, reply of the webinar, is it possible? I'm not quite sure what you mean, Mar Marjola. Um, reply, of, do you mean a copy of the webinar? Uh, it is being recorded if that's what you mean. Um, so I'm sure the team um, will be more than happy to share that with you. Um, will we will we be able to see questions and answers section after the webinar is finished? I don't think um, Zoom allows that. So unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to see the Q&A um, once the webinar is complete. But of course, you will hear most of the answers um, on the audio. Um, I finished my residency in orthodontics in India. Post GDC re registration, will I be practicing as an orthodontist or general dentist? Uh, you'll be practicing as a general dentist. Um, if you want to uh, take an MSc in orthodontics uh, or to go that route, of course, you can do afterwards. Uh, but this is general dentistry, as the name suggests. Um, what is the average pay for a student's nurse? Um, Pam or uh, Claire, are you able to elaborate on that? Yeah, I think uh, this is a, a normally a minimum wage job. So the pay range is between £18,000 to £30,000 pro rata. Um, so that that's on a full time if you if you did that on a full time basis which obviously combining it with studies you you wouldn't but as a, a minimum wage job goes that's that's pretty good um okay great um sardet um actually i'm a prosthodontist i have a phd professor how can i find a job can i work in university so just to reiterate that again the university of ulster and the college of medicine and dentistry does not deal with recruitment. Uh, we can sort of point you in the right direction, but we do not offer jobs um, in that sense. Of course, once you finish your ORE and LDS, then we have employers that you'd be working for as part of this um, yeah. scholarship scheme. So you'll see full details of that on the scholarship page, which the link has been shared. So please um, note that we, we cannot offer jobs as prosthodontists, um, etc. We can help with jobs as a dentist once you've completed the course and passed your ORE or LDS and are registered with the General Dental Council of the UK. That's quite right, Joe. I mean, the, the, the college has a sister organisation called Healthcare Talent, which is specialising in placing healthcare professionals who, who are fully registered and permitted to work in the UK, uh, placing those with um, really good job opportunities across the UK. But absolutely, Joe, that the first step has to be uh, clearing the registration exam uh, before, you, before you could work in any sort of specialist um, capacity. Um, Dr. Eshwa, did you have a question for us? Hello. Hello. Am I audible? We, yes. yes, we can hear you. Yes. Um, uh, it's a great initiative that uh, the organization is taking. Uh, Thank you. I had a question regarding the uh, actual program. 
Sorry, Dr. Eshwa, could you repeat that, please? Yeah, I had a uh, question regarding uh, what are the uh, things that will be focused on uh, in the advanced uh, general registry program. Is, is your, is your Doctor, question... Would you, would you please write your question to Q&A session? Claire, is, did you get the question? I think it will be easier. I, I, I wondered if it might be a question for Marwa. Was it a question about the content of the program, the Masters in Advanced General Dental Practice? Yes, yes. My question is uh, whether it is a certification program, uh, like does it have, is it a credentialed program, and also what it is, what exactly it deals with, the advanced uh, program. Uh, okay, yes, I think, Mawa, if, if you would be able to come in and, and answer that. Thank you, Claire. It's, uh, I, I am really sorry, but I couldn't, I couldn't. So so what I understood from Dr. <laughs> yeah. Eshwa was um, the, the master's program, is it a credentialed program? And um, in other, in other, and, and, and as well, um, what does it, what does it contain? What's it going to teach him? I think, I think. Dr. Eshwa, correct me, but I think yes. that was the gist. Yes, that is okay. exactly the question I have in mind. Okay. Uh, well, it is um, uh, the credential of the program. It is an internationally recognized master. So you will graduate with uh, an MS um, Master of Science in Advanced General Dental Practice. And I would put a bracket, um, a bracket next to uh, General Dental Practice. So it's um, the, the, the content and teaching learning outcomes are focused at um, general practitioner levels, um, ensuring that their skills is... Um, up to the standard um, 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 with the uh, practice of dentistry in the UK. Um, there's a module about contemporary approach to dentistry that um, that introduces, and um, I, I would put an emphasis on introduces students to the fundamentals of advancements in uh, in dentistry. So um, the, the 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 module covers. Um, understanding or um, uh, introduction to uh, what is um, what is digital dentistry, uh, what are the component of um, 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 the radiographs, understanding CBCT, how how the advancement is is utilized in in patient care, um, um, care and care and and. Um, understanding um, um, the, the risk factors around um, implant patients. But in general, as I said, it's it's the general um, dental practice. Um, um, I, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, uh, that answers my question. Thank you so much. Excellent. Okay, did we have any more questions? We've run slightly over time. Uh, Hakan, where are you? Shall we um, shall we move to wrap this session up today? Um, there are a few a few more hands raised. Okay, okay. Do they get their questions or they still have. Yeah, does anybody have a question they'd like to? That's fine. Should we go through to Mohammed? Yeah, I, I, I think we, we can go through it because of the, it is a uh, quite nice session then. Yes, Mohammed, let's hear from you. Mohammed Osama. Unmute yourself, please. Yes, Mohammed, we are listening to you. Uh, hi, everyone. Can hi. you, can you hear me? We yes. can hear you. First of all, ma'am, thank you for organizing this webinar and this very informative webinar for me. Thank you. Uh, actually, I, have a, I had a question that uh, I am a final year student from Pakistan, final year BDS student. Shall I apply for this scholarship program? When do you graduate, Mohammed? Uh, I can be graduate in 2024. Okay, so I wouldn't apply for a scholarship program now. We have three intakes for this program next year, January, May, and September. I can't guarantee that the scholarship program will be available for them, but in order for you to actually join our program, we need to see a graduation. We need to see that you've 
actually got a BDS, you completed your degree, you have the degree transcript. So you will need to apply next year. However, um, we can't guarantee the programme will be available then, as in the scholarship programme. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for your question. Thank you. I'll just quickly go through some of the questions coming through in the Q&A as well. So I applied for the online exam, but payment still didn't complete. Is there anything I can do? Um, it sounds like our payment system may be down. Um, if you don't mind, um, we I'll send you a link to our um, support team. Uh, you can drop an email. They should be able to get that back up and running very shortly. Yeah, thanks. It, it was it was um, we were having problems earlier on today, but I'm informed that it is back and working now. So um, perhaps try again. And then failing that, if um, if go go with the link that Joe will send to the support team. OK, um, international dentists require experience to give the exam or final year students. I believe final year students, if you've completed and you hope you are a dentist, uh, you should be fine to apply for, for this. Um, we still have more hands raised and questions and answers, but um, I think maybe we can do another session or you can write email or you can uh, follow our uh, social media accounts and ask from there, or um, you can just email yeah. for your, your questions thank you and um hakan uh joe um pam has just um alerted me that uh, the students who have tried to pay and and couldn't pay the first time maybe because of technical problems on our side um they actually can't go back in unless they complete a whole new form again so yes i think uh, you follow the follow the link that Joe will. How will you do that, Joe? Will you put it in the chat, or how how will you send the? I send a scholarships email in the chat. The so everybody one. has access to it. Just give me one moment, please. And when okay. sending us an email, if you put your full name that you've used in your application form, and the email address that you've mentioned in your application form, we can track it down and we can send you an. To get your payment made once Great. you've made payments to the examination sorry pam your voice faded out as you were saying once you've paid you'll get a link to the online exam and you'll get yeah. a, li a link to a practice exam as well so that will help you test your equipment and it will get you can do a few questions so you see the style of exam question that you're going to get um it, you know then go on to take your take your exam. You need to be in a quiet room, uh, you know, in a quiet space. You're not going to have other people coming in and out. It's it's two hours long. Um, you can read the reading list on the web page uh, by way of preparation. Um, but it, but if you you know if you're a practicing dentist, um, this this won't be uh, um, unfamiliar to you. It's it, the general dentistry questions. Um, and yeah, please. We, we can't wait to see how many more um, applicants um, will join us and, um, and and we wish you all the best of luck. Any more points to add to that one, um, Pam? No, I think you've pretty much covered it. Uh, we've put a link in the few times, which is how to apply for the scholarship, that landing page that goes through a step-step guide of what yeah. you need to do, what the full process is, entry requirements, what happens next. Everything is detailed in there. So do take the time to have a quick read through. Yeah. You've also got a reading list at the end, of, which is key for your examinations. Just bear in mind the key dates. The examination does close on the 20th of June. Mm. Um, is it what time is it? UK time we're going by? Well, we 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 the, the actual the, the, the final thing will be midnight. So um yeah, UK yeah midnight time. UK. So um, get your you know, don't leave it to the last minute in case there are any technical problems. Uh, you, you try and you know we ideally apply a couple of hours before that 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 window closes. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, and then do, take the online exam. And if, so, if you are having any problems with the payment, please email the scholarships um, at com org.uk uh, email and the, the team will try to help you 
hundred percent. I will also recommend probably not waiting till the last day to get your exam sorted. No, in beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, hey. can we just slowly and um, close the session? I don't want to miss any question, but time is going on. So you can just email your question sent via our social accounts from everywhere. Um, the panelists, if you have anything to add, please feel free to add. Otherwise, I'll say goodbye to everybody. I would like to thank you, the College of Medicine and Street team, all the panelists for these clear and information uh, and before leaving the session. Uh, Professor Maher, do you have anything to add in final? Th thank you very much, Hakan. Thank you very much, the wider team in uh, Knightsbridge Acad Academy. Thank you, the team of the college, Marwa al kassab Director of Academic Programs. Thank you, uh, Claire O'Leary, Director of International Relations and Partnership. Thank you very much, Joe and Pam, a very important recruitment team. Thank you very much, everyone, um, and hope to see you soon in the college. Well, yeah. Yep, hope to see you yeah, soon. Yeah, Hakan, for, for organizing for the webinar. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Hakan. Um, thank Pam you. and Joe, okay. and thank you uh, for, for who attended as well. Thank you for their time. Best of luck with the online exam, guys. Yeah, good luck. Good, good luck, luck, everybody.